Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for joining us today. My name is Joni Ogg, and on behalf of TravelProfessionalNews.com, HomeBasedTravelAgent.com, and FindAHostTravelAgency.com, I want to welcome all of you to this webinar today. It's going to be really a cool one. I'm looking forward to it. So we all know that, have you been on, on these presentations before that Jen does? She's amazing. And she's a straightforward and energetic, to say the least, a force in our industry. And Jen Lee is Travel Planners International's Vice President of Industry Engagement and Support. And she's not shy about her obsession with really helping travel advisors build their empires, which is exactly what we're talking about here in this presentation that she's put together for us. Um, her advice is always spot on. And she's working all the time and she's traveling all the time. But if she's not, you're going to find her cheering on Bama football and playing with her grandchildren. She has a new one and enjoying life with her friends and drinking some Pinot Grigio. I'll toast you to that one. And today's webinar topic <laughs> is effectively managing your business while traveling. Now, this is something I know all of us in travel find challenging, but it's so necessary for us to be on top of it. And two very lucky attendees are going to win each win 30-minute consultations with Jen. So be sure to listen carefully for your chance to win. Now, remember that you are all muted, but we do welcome your questions. And you can put those in the questions area that you see on the right-hand panel of your screen at any time. And we'll get to those um, when the presentation is over. And Jen does things a little differently than some of their speakers, which we love. And that is, she sometimes will ask questions along the way. So when she does, um, don't be shy, go ahead and respond. And then she will ask me to share those answers with her and all of you on here. So I'm going to turn the microphone over to my very good friend so she can get started. Welcome, Jen. Hey, everybody. Thank you, Joni. Yes, and I already have uh, questions in mind, so I'm glad you uh, teed it up for everyone. Uh, if you've not uh, listened to any of my presentations in the past, Joni is correct. Um, it's very weird for me to be talking um, at a computer into a microphone without seeing your beautiful faces, you crazy cats out there, and uh, feeding off your energy. So, um, I like to make it interactive, and thankfully, Joni plays along with me as well. So be ready to start typing. Um, so yeah, effectively managing your business while traveling. You know, uh, this is a topic that we actually had some pretty active discussions here at TPI not too long ago with our advisor. Um, for those of you who've been in the industry for a little while, uh, you know that travel um, and travel advisors traveling while they've got clients um, and booming businesses is something that um, is almost a weekly uh, situation for a lot of advisors. Many advisors like load up their calendar with opportunities. We're going to talk about the opportunities that are out there um, and when you're traveling. Plus, how many of you guys actually try to take a real vacation? Let's make that the first question, Joni. How okay. many travel advisors out actually take a one week or two one week vacations every year. How many of you actually give yourself permission and go ahead and type in how many days per year do you travel personally a true vacation, not a fam, not an inaugural, but like you are leaving your business behind vacation. I'll be curious to see how many days uh, these entrepreneurs take. I'll tell you when I was uh, had my own business consulting practice, it was me, myself, and I for the first few years, and then I had an assistant, and then I actually ended up with eight people that worked for me uh, towards the end, but I only took one true vacation in like seven years. One true, obviously, I needed a travel advisor in my life to help me, but <laughs> this was before I got industry and I only took one true vacation it was a nine-day vacation in Jackson Hole Wyoming and I was able to truly disconnect and I felt I look back on it now saying I wish I'd had somebody who would give me some of the tips that I'm going to share with you guys today um, to help me go on a real vacation because we all know that vacations re-energize us so what's everyone uh, saying in here uh, okay, so it's, it's varied. Um, a, somebody says, "What? What is that?" <laughs> that made me laugh. <laughs> okay, um, a few days if lucky. Um, someone says they try to take two to three weeks a year. Um, mm -hmm. Some people take them and don't 
uh, don't work at all. They shut down completely from the work side. Other people say that they come in and, you know, spend most of the day on the vacation piece, but try to slip in a couple hours of work each day or every other day. Um, zero, zero, maybe three days. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Harry, you need to take a longer vacation than that. Uh, two days, <laughs> Bonnie, you need a bigger vacation than that. Anyway, so it's kind of all across the board, but Everybody, I'm sure that if you ask the question, how many want to, it'd be like 100%, right? Well, 100%, because think about it. We're in the business of helping others disconnect and go on vacation. We're taking great care of them. That's what y'all do as travel advisors. Uh, you help take great care of folks so they don't have to worry about anything, so they can truly um, you know, disconnect and reconnect with those that they're with, whoever that may be, including just me my, my by myself traveling solo travelers want to connect with where they're going so it's i knew i'm kind of like a lawyer Joni. i never ask a question i don't know the answer to already so i kind of knew that's what the answer was going to be and i'd like everyone to type in the word what word resonates if not one but all three of them which word resonates when you do travel are you feeling guilty do you feel stressed <laughs> Do you feel pressured or do you feel free? Like oh, I love that. Guilty? That's a good question. Okay, we, we have some guilty. Or free. We have guilty, yeah. we have peaceful, we have anxiety, we have stressed, we have free, uh, anxious, free, free, feel anxious, guilty, stressed, guilty. Uh, I enjoy <laughs> myself, but I check in all the time. Free but pressured. Yep, it's uh, pretty Pretty much everybody feeling about the same way. Happy with a lot, little bit of guilt. Semi-free. Mm -hmm. <laughs> These are great. Semi-free. Uh, free, but pressured. Okay. <laughs> All right. So, yeah. Overwhelmed. Okay. Right. Well, and a good thing is, is if you felt free and not pressured and you felt like you had it together, chances are you aren't listening to this webinar anyway. Um, okay, because wait, you've I already nailed it. One. I got the best one. I'm sorry. This is it. Gia is the best one. Mm -hmm. It all depends on how much I drink. Ah. Which, it was a good answer. <laughs> That's a very good answer. I'm with you on that. That's why Pinot Grigio always has to be a flow in wherever I'm going. So, um, okay. So here's the thing. It's a challenge for us, right? The challenge is um when you travel whether it be on business or for vacation and that's for right now we're going to talk about both because i don't it really doesn't matter if you're traveling on vacation or if you're traveling for business you all feel the same way right there's a very few of you are going to feel completely free and unencumbered um if you own your own business if you're an employee that's a different situation maybe a little bit um but most of y'all are entrepreneurs uh running your business you might even be managing the team so here's our challenge the challenge becomes when you're traveling clients are traveling while you're traveling right so that becomes a challenge um maybe you're in the process of finalizing plans for your clients and all of a sudden you have a trip i know for me i was just sharing with joni i have about 132 days already scheduled this year for 2023 and um when i'm working on projects and traveling it makes it very difficult i have a very tough time i have to have a, a really unique i have to have a really finite system to finish those projects. Well, that's the same thing for you guys, finalizing plans for your clients. Or the other challenge is you don't wanna miss an opportunity, especially if sales are important to you, which who doesn't want a sale, okay? That's how you build your business, is by making sales. So are there other challenges that I didn't have listed here? These are the top three that I find with our advisors. Uh, when they travel, they have clients that are traveling when they're traveling, they're in the process of finalizing things or in the middle of stuff, or they don't want to miss a sales opportunity. That tends to be the challenge for us when we're traveling for business or even pleasure. All right. So today I'm going to review a couple of things. I'm going to give you some technologies to help you. I'm going to um, help you adjust your mindset. I'm also going to um, have a big debate with you, and I'm really looking forward to that. And I'm going to give you some bravery uh, techniques, things that some of our advisors have shared with me that they do that are truly brave. And at the end of this, my goal for this webinar for you is that you feel a little more prepared and a little more ready to actually travel 
whether it be for business or personal, and be able to really engage while you are traveling and not mess up your business. All right, so let's start with the first thing, which is the mindset, okay? The very first thing you have to do is adjust your mindset. A new mindset equals new results. I, I love this photo for this reason. Uh, and one thing I want you to understand is it's okay. You are in charge. This might be a new mindset for many of you. Many of you may feel that your client is in charge or that your business has uh, ruling over you or that your to-do tasks rule your world but in reality you are in charge and like most things in life the more effort you put in the beginning the easier the results are towards the end or through the process so you're in charge it's important when you're traveling and i'm getting these tips by the way guys directly from many of my top advisors at tpi um, these are the tips that they shared with us the most effective advisors that we have said this is what helps them they set the expectation with their clients when they're traveling they let um it's important to let them know that you see them and i'm going to kind of dive into that in just a moment while you're traveling it's okay give them a little love now and and promise more love later and this is probably the scariest word in the entrepreneurial sphere no no is a complete yet scary sentence so let's talk about this mindset first because without adjusting the mindset none of these other techniques and um, tools that i'm going to share with you are going to make any difference whatsoever so what some of our advisors have told us and i know this to be true in any business it is up to you to set the expectation with your clients in other words, you let them know, hey, listen, guy, and many of you do this now. How many of you guys set office hours for your business? Maybe you have it on the bottom of your signature, or maybe in your out of office, or in your onboarding documents with your clients. You tell them, I only take, you know, uh, calls Monday through Friday from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m., text messages over the weekend. How many of you actually set boundaries? That's another word that people use, but set boundaries with your with their clients i'd love to see um, some notes uh, anybody typing in boundaries that they set in the case of you traveling while you're typing i'm going to keep talking in the case where you're traveling sorry guys my email is open in the case where you're traveling um you want to set the expectation ahead of time with your clients that when you are on the road your response time is going to look a little different your response um the way you respond may look a little different. It could be, and we're gonna talk about when you do this, but it could be that when you're traveling, you let your clients know, hey, listen, um, only send me emails. If you send me a text, I'm gonna send you straight back to the email, or maybe it's vice versa. You've gotta come up with what your process is, but the important part of the mindset is you set that expectation. Joni, has anybody said anything in there so far? Yeah, definitely. Okay. Some people said no boundaries yet, but they want, they're working on it and they're looking for your suggestions. Um, heck yeah. Uh, Monday through Friday, eight to eight, Saturday, nine to five, Sunday I'm off. Um, yes, boundaries are so important. Would love guidelines. Uh, not nearly enough boundaries in place. Uh, yes, yes, yes. Most people say yes, but a lot of them um, are looking actually to get more suggestions from you. Absolutely. So the, when it comes to boundaries, guys, this is it's really based on what's going to help you run your business most effectively. And that's the word is effective. How can you be most effective? I'll give you it has nothing to do with what your clients are looking for or what they expect. It's what you say. This is what works best in my business. And I am my most effective when I don't work Saturdays and Sundays or when I don't take phone calls after 4 p.m. I'll give you an example. My boss, he knows I'm on the road all the time, and he always tells me, if I'm tired, he's Jen, if you're traveling and you're tired, take a nap. He's very clear with his communication on that. That's, he knows if I take a 20 minute nap, I'm good to go. So it's a, it's, a boundary, it's a boundary he's given me permission to set for myself. So you have to say, and I know if I take that 20 minute nap, I'm good to go until midnight that night. So I give myself permission to do that. And you have to do the same thing, but you have to share that information with your clients, set those expectations. It's whatever is 
going to make you most effective. And that's how you present it to your client. Hey, I find that I'm most effective in curating the unique experiences and getting everything, all my T's crossed and my I's dotted when I, I, you know, I'm active four days a week on the phone with Zooms and three days a week I'm resting and only checking emails once a day, whatever that looks like for you, okay? You are in charge. But when you're traveling, it's even more important because you have less time, guys. Also, when you're traveling, one of the mindset shifts is that if you get an email, it doesn't mean you need to answer that email. What it means is you can let them know that you see them. In other words, a lot of advisors say, I have to answer every single email. Well, no, what you can do, and we're gonna have a debate here in a little bit, but what you can do is say, hey, I've received your email. I'm out of the office until Tuesday. I will respond to your answer on Wednesday. Feel free to send me more details and I'll see you on Wednesday. But let them know that you see them because then you know you're not ignoring them. And they also know that you're not ignoring them. I'm gonna give you some techniques on some things that you can do to help with that. But in the mindset set change, it's helping them know that you've seen them. Once people realize you've seen them, then they tend to relax, right? Have you ever sent like an email to a partner and nobody calls you back, or nobody emails you back, you just get that auto response and then you get nothing else and you get nothing else. Then you send another email because you haven't heard anything. Then they have an out of office on there that says I'm traveling for the next 11 and a half days. And now you're like, this is, I can't wait 11 and a half days. Nobody has seen it. But on the other end, they may have seen it. All they needed to do was send you a quick email. Hey, I see you. I'll, I'll follow up on Wednesday. It calms everybody down. Also, I'm gonna share with you some tips on how you can give them a little bit of love right now. And again, that's helping them know that you see them, but you give them a little love now. You don't have to give them the whole kit and caboodle. If somebody wants to book a trip and you know there is a, a time crunch involved because maybe you have a promotion that's going on or you know something that's got a really time sensitive to it, I'm gonna give you some techniques and some tools, but the mindset shift is it's okay, go ahead and make the booking, but you don't have to do the whole thing right now. You're just gonna do the booking and set the expectation that you will follow up with all the other details that are necessary later on. You may have to break your own process and procedure, but that's a mindset change. Maybe it's just better for me to get it off my plate, get it booked for my clients so they don't go somewhere else, um, and also help my client take advantage of that promotion, but I don't have to do the whole darn thing. Right? Have you ever started something? Like it takes me two weeks to do my expense report, Joni, because I can't stand doing my expense report. I used to hate those too. And we have a great app, Concur, and it's a lot easier, but gosh, I hate doing these darn things. So I do a little bit at a time, okay? I give it a little love at a time. And then the scariest word of all, no. No is a complete sentence. Hey, I know you're on vacation. However, I really want to talk to you while my cousin's in town because we want to plan this trip. You can say no. We have advisors that have told us that while they're traveling, they do not take on new clients. They just say no. They put it in their out of office. They send it in the follow-up email, whatever that is. It's in their signature. During these weeks, if you're a new client, we will not be able to get to you until the week of such and such. No is a complete and very scary sentence. It's the scariest word of all. How does everybody feel about the word no? No, I don't want your business. No, I cannot return your call right now. No, I'm not able to jump on that emergency right now. How does that make everybody feel? I I'm looking. I don't like the word no. I, I never mm -hmm. have liked that word. Okay. It is a, okay. It is a word. Never say no, never. Uh, guilty. People say it makes them uh, anxious that I'm going to lose them as a client. I'm mm -hmm. okay with it. Uh, as a new agent, it's hard to say no when I need business, makes me anxious. Uh, it's a good idea because when you say yes to everything, you're saying no to yourself. Oh, that was that was a sweet answer. That was good. Very good answer. Yeah, that was a really it, good answer. It takes a while for people to really get comfortable with it. Um, but I will tell you, the advisors that I've talked to that have set those very clear boundaries have kind of done number one and number four on this list have said that they make more money. They make more money because they're able to recharge. They're able to actually enjoy that investment. Let's just say you go on a FAM or an inaugural, but you spend your entire time, and I know this, I'm guilty of this, I spend my entire time in the cabin on the balcony um, at, during the sea days instead of actually paying attention, walking around the ship and getting to experience the ship. 
well, I'm gonna make less money if I'm an advisor, I'm invited to an inaugural, but I find that I just need to be in my cabin to answer all these emails. Well, guess what? You've just spent time out of your office, away from your family, probably money to fly there, drive there, whatever, right? Parking, all of that, and you're not getting the content that you need to actually leverage that opportunity to its fullest. We have a very top producing advisor. Every time we go on a top producer trip, I always yell at her because I'm like, Renee, I never see you. You're always in your room working and this is your retreat. This is your reward trip and you're not able to take advantage of it. Those that really shift this mindset and say, no, I'm not gonna check those emails. No, I'm not taking on those new clients. No, I'm not gonna be able to do this and set those expectations are able to really leverage the opportunity of the reason why they're traveling to begin with. Okay, so I'm hoping I've kind of convinced you a little bit from a mindset. Now, I wanna get into a big debate. To set an out of office message or to not set an out of office message. This is definitely a debate amongst many people. Now, Joni, when you're traveling, do you set an out of office message like automatic replies or do I, you just keep nope. in your email? I used to, but I don't do it anymore. I haven't done it for years, probably okay. 10 years. Okay, and can you share with me why? Personally, I, I'm i always, I've got my phone with me at all times, obviously got my mail, I, you know, I've got my watch, it comes on my watch. I mean, I don't really completely disconnect. So I get it and if I need to respond to it, I do. Um, I just don't feel comfortable. When, when I get out of office, I respect it and I understand it but it always bugs me because then I've got to put them in a place where I know to go back and remind them or me that, you know, we need to communicate. So I don't know. I don't know how to answer why I do it. <laughs> I just do. I know. I know it's okay. And I want to hear everybody else's. Are you an out of office automatic reply person or not? I'm and there's here. not a right or wrong answer. I think there are right and wrong ways, or I should say there are better ways to utilize it or not utilize it. And that's what I'm going to talk about right now. So while I'm kind of going over this, answer yes, out of office, no, out of office. So I'll be okay. curious to see. So everybody that's written in and has comments, start back again and write me a yes or no, okay? So I can kind of keep track of those. It's kind I'll of tell you. it's kind of yes and no, Jen. It's 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 kind of mm -hmm. half and half. Mm -hmm. yep. So I'll tell you, there are some there are some good out of office messages that actually add value, and that's the word I want you to look at right now. How can my auto out of office message add value to my clients or prospective clients? All right. If it can't add value, then all you're doing if done incorrectly, is turning people off. One of the values, which I hate that word value, but one of the values that advisors walk around saying they have is, I'm here for you. If there's an emergency, I'm here for you. Yet we put on out of offices, and I've got one, um, and I, I, I need to tell her this because she's a TBI advisor, and I haven't seen it right lately, so maybe she's heard me talk about it, but we had a TBI advisor that had like, we're so very busy here at ABC Travel Company. Uh, we take inquiries as they come in. It could take up to 72 hours before we're able to respond to your email. Oh my God, delete. I would never do business with that person if I were new. If I were a current client, I would be like, oh my goodness, this person is so busy. I'm just, a, 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 I'm going to be bothering them, right? Yeah. Out of offices, if not done properly can send a message that you don't care it could send a message that um you're so busy and how many of you guys have heard that horrible sentence i'm so sorry i didn't want to bother you or i hate bothering you how many of you have heard that from your clients you're like bother me i want your business especially if you see them on facebook or instagram they're on vacation and you like message them like hey how come you didn't call me oh i didn't want to bother you i could see that you were in australia for two weeks i didn't want to bother you so you have to be really careful about this. So if you decide to use an out of office, here are my tips for effective out of office messages. Uh, use it to tell a story of what you are doing. What's exciting about this, what I really liked about this, and this came from Michelle Cartwright, one of our mentors at TPI. She said she started to use her out of office and she'd say, hey, hey, you've got my automatic reply. 
I'm actually, you know, in, I'm making up this story. I'm actually in at the Astor River Cruise Summit for the next seven days. I'll be uh, touring nine different river cruise ships and bringing back all that knowledge to help my clients make good decisions on which river cruise line is going to work best for their next vacation. Follow along as I post videos on my Instagram account. Um, and if you if you need anything else, click here and fill out this form so that I've got everything in one place for you. So she tells the story, and I bet she probably changes it. If I were an advisor, maybe I would change it. Hey, today I'm I'm, I'm on day three of a ten day trip where I'm learning all about new resorts in Mexico. Check out my Instagram as I'm going to be at you know. I don't know, some charisma resort or a secrets or a dreams or what have you. How cool would that be if that's the out of office? I just did an out of office because I'm up here in Alabama and I just described what I was doing. I'm going to be waking up in the morning, listening to birds, you know, singing me a concert and ending the day with a uh, fried shrimp and a cold beer in my hands. Right. You know, so I painted the picture. I used it to tell a story. People then it gets your personality a little bit. You're in the travel business. If you're traveling, paint that picture. Another good I, thing that you can do to, with your out of office. Before you go further, I have to tell everybody that's on here because they may not have you know, gotten your out of office, but we're not your out of office, but where you were. Because I did when I was reaching out to you about the webinar and I loved it. I was like, oh God, she's having so much fun. And I was actually super happy for you. So I think that you know, there's a lot of different ways for people to take it, but yours, yours definitely, me. I kind of wanted to be there. I was kind of jealous. Yeah. Oh, well, good. Well, yeah. And we started this before we uh, did the recording. You're like, it looks ideal. And we're friends on Facebook. So my out of office matched the pictures that I had on my Facebook page and my Instagram. And so use it to tell the story of your travel, right? Like if you're going to have it and also, and all of them, give them some sort of CTA or a call to action for them to follow through. Because most of the time when someone reaches out to you, it's because they're looking for some sort of action on your part. Put the, put the onus back on them and have them take action. And this is where you can set those boundaries. Hey, I'm out of office, but I am checking, you know, my emails as well as my inquiry forms. If you're looking to go on, on your next great adventure, click here, give me three pieces of information and I'll put you in my calendar which it also in your out of office, you can always put a link to your Calendly, which I'm gonna talk about a little bit later on, but give them something that they can do versus just reading, okay? Um, help them serve themselves, that's my next point. Help them uh, be able to take good care. Hey, if you're traveling, you know, you know, if you're traveling and you're at the resort currently, please send me a text message. Um, so that I can take care of you right away. Or please send a message to, or click here, fill out this form. It's going to my assistant who's going to be able to help you. Give them something that will help them serve themselves. Um, and if you have an out of office, and we do this at TPI, everyone kind of has a backup and we're always in each other's emails. So even though maybe Tammy Roan is on vacation for a week, Lori May is kind of her backup and Lori May's jumping in her emails all the time. There's an out of office there, but we're still jumping in going, hey, I see that you emailed Tammy. She's going to be gone for a few days. I think I can help you with this blah, blah, blah. So it's okay to have the out of office, but let's do it with some thought and let's make it add value to the person that just emailed you. And they do, uh, if you have something funny on there, uh, people do tend to email you back and go, hey, I got it. I hope you're having a great time. Now they know that you know and you know where they're, they're coming from. All right. If you decide not to do an out of office, which many people do not do an out of office, here are some uh, tips for how to kind of maintain this while you're traveling. Make sure you set aside dedicated time at least three times a day to check that email. Now, listen, if you're going to Walt Disney World and you're standing in a queue that's 90 minutes long and you've got that watch on, Joni, you're probably going to be checking your email the whole time, right? Yeah. But if you're at the or you're doing something where you're really supposed to be paying attention to where you are, set aside two or three times a day for you to check that email. You don't have to have an out of office, but you can certainly um, check it in the mornings, like super early, maybe uh, in the afternoon during a half hour lull, and maybe at night again, but three times a day. Use Calendly to schedule follow-ups. So when somebody emails you and you see it, they go, hey, we're interested in this, you can quickly reply, and I'm gonna give you a piece of technology that's gonna help you with this, but you can send a quick reply and say, hey, yeah, I'm on vacation, 
but or I'm traveling out of country right now, it's a six hour time difference, click here and schedule some time on my calendar for when I come back. Again, it's giving them an option to take uh, take action and you don't have to have an out of office, you just need, need to know how to reply quickly and I'm gonna give you a tip on that. Have a backup to throw things to. Um, and this could be a backup travel advisor. This could be if you're with a host agency, most host, host agencies have you know, uh, vacation support for taking final payments or answering questions, but make sure you've prepped that person ahead of time, you've filled out your paperwork, you have found that advisor, you've got your assistant, whoever that is, but have a backup to throw things to so when the email comes in, you can forward that on to somebody with some quick action items. And then plan ahead. What can be scheduled right now? Um, how many of you guys use a CRM where you've got automations? Uh, go ahead and type that in. If you have a CRM where you've set up automations, your life it becomes way simpler when you're traveling if you've got automations. So I'd love to see what people are. Primarily, saying. yes to all of that. Yeah, yes, 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 yes. Lots of the yeses. Key Good. The key to this set aside time to check three times a day is to only do it three times a day. No more than that. Otherwise, you're in your email all the time. And then, you know what, you're finding yourself solving the problem when in reality, you're supposed to be at this event. You're supposed to be present. And I think that's what's so important is you are spending time, money, energy um, going on these FAMs, inaugurals, vacations, things and we're not actually present and so we're not able to leverage that time all right here's some proactive tips these are things that you can do right now um, i like to call it maintaining your rock star status um uh, plan your year as much as you can in advance so if you think you are going to go on you're going to go to cruise world you think you're going to go to maybe your consortia conference or your host agency conference and um, you want to set aside two weeks of the year to say yes to a couple of fans go ahead and look at your calendar right now when do you want to go on vacation and plan ahead of time so that you can actually backdate yourself two three four weeks prior to prep for you going out. Because again, this is all about managing your business effectively while you're traveling. Um, connect with your clients weeks ahead of time to let them know, hey, in three weeks, I'm gonna be out of the office for seven days. Let's talk more about some of the questions you may have. Hey, this is a great sales call, quite frankly, is to set aside and call 10 clients every single day to say, hey, listen, I'm going to be gone for seven to 10 days. I want to know what's on your schedule. What should we be working on for the next six to eight months worth of travel? Next 12 months, I want to start working on that now while I'm gone. Or hey, maybe it's because you're going to a very specialized conference. You can call your clients ahead of time and say, hey, I'm gonna be gone for a week, but while I'm there, I'm gonna be checking out some more luxury focused type uh, travel partners. Share with me, or maybe expedition. Share with me, have you ever thought about going on an expedition? Is Antarctica or Arctic on your, on your bucket list? Make those proactive calls now. You're telling them that you're gone, plus you're able to start working on some things and you're making that trip more effective. Uh, pad your due dates for your clients. I bet many of you do this already, but if the final payment is due on, you know, June 30th, tell them that it's due June 12th. Pad those due dates so they get you get those um, payments in way before you leave. So if somebody messes up by a day or two, uh, you're not hitting some sort of cancellation. Um, reconfirm everything, especially air and hotel, prior to you leaving. So when you know that you're going to be gone for seven days, look at who's going to be traveling the week before and the week after. Reconfirm those trips. Reconfirm them with the suppliers at that time. I talked about this before. You can be proactive. If somebody texts you and says, hey, I just saw the sale, I definitely want to go on this Virgin Cruise, blah, blah. go ahead and, and take care of the booking, but tell them you're going to send all the details and the follow-up paperwork and all that other stuff when you get back into the office, set that expectation. Probably the number one thing that we see our advisors struggle with um, and gets them in trouble is they don't keep up on their accounting. 
So most of the people that are listening to this probably belong to a host agency of some sort would be my guess, or they've got people that they need to send invoices to. For us, this is a big deal. People get so busy with their regular business and then they get really behind when they're traveling, they forget to submit their sales or they forget to reconcile and search for the commission if the commission isn't due. That gets travel advisors in more trouble than anything else that I see out there, believe it or not. Keep up with your accounting and control the sales that you want. Um, I want to share this really cool story. Uh, one of our advisors, her name is Celeste Peters, and um, she's just a rock star. Her, her company name is Caribbean Travel Queen. And um, when she is on Virgin, I guess when you're on, on Virgin, I haven't sailed on Virgin yet, and I'm not a travel advisor, but um, you can get extra what they call bar tab and extra money uh, for bookings that are happening while you're on board. And so she promotes, hey, while I'm on board, make sure you call me right now to book your Virgin cruise because I'm going to be able to add an extra $650 worth of value to that cruise, but it's only good while I'm traveling on the cruise. Talk about a win-win, right? She's enjoying the cruise. She's posting content about it. She's teasing it up to her clients. She's got a strong call to action. She's making sales. She's filling that pipeline while she's traveling. She's so wicked smart. So how can you take that um, and control the sales that you want while you're traveling? All right, I'm gonna take a breath. Are we getting any comments? Questions? Um, I have some questions from earlier. Do you want me to hit, the, hit you with those yeah. or do you wanna wait till the end? Okay. So um, what if it's a personal travel um, to rest and relax? This is in regard to you, the leaving it, you know, out of office. So they're saying, mm -hmm. what if it's personal travel and I really want to rest, relax or a birthday? How would you handle this, a personal travel instead of just a work one? Because we talked a lot about the well, work. Listen, you, you, you're your own boss, right? Um, You've got to call. I'm going to come up with some. I'm going to give you some other things, but quite frankly, let's go back to this. If you are putting an out of office on, tell them it's personal. I said in my out of office, I'm celebrating my 23rd uh, wedding anniversary with my husband. People tend to calm down and not expect me to do things during my wedding anniversary weekend, right? But if it's personal, but you should have somebody to throw things to. Um, it's the, the same applies. You can even say, I will not be checking my emails. I am on a personal trip, completely disconnecting, just as I try to uh, plan vacations for my clients so that they can uh, completely disconnect. That's what I'm doing right now. If you do that, that is fine. That means you are setting that boundary. You're setting that expectation for that client uh, or whoever is emailing you. And they either respect it or they don't because here is, oops, gosh darn it, sorry about that. Because here is what you need to understand. You need to set the expectation. The expectation that you want them to follow is up to you. So I'm hoping that answers. But, you know, when you get back, you still have a business you're trying to run. Just like when you go on vacation and you work for someone, there's still stuff in your desk. I know for me, I get really kind of freaked out if I go too long without checking emails just to get rid of the junk emails. How many junk emails yeah. do we get, guys, right? Yeah. No uh, flag the email. Yeah. You know, it, All you're right. on your own business. You're working Here's another one for you. So this person said that you mentioned Calendly and is Calendly better than TidyCal? Have you used both previously? I've not used TidyCal, but Calendly is my go-to. Uh, okay. And I'm gonna explain that here in just a second, as a matter of fact. Perfect. So anything next to your calendar that allows you to control your calendar and control uh, what type of appointments you're taking and that has automations attached to it. So let's get let's get going through this and then I'm going to talk about the different technologies. So here's some bravery moves that really pay off and this comes straight from uh, TPI advisors. Uh, they tell all and they really mean it. We have advisors that say they don't take on new clients when they're doing personal travel. When they're on personal travel, they just say, I'm not taking on new clients right now. Even on their own business travel, hey, I'm traveling for business right now. Uh, if you are a new client, please click here, fill out the intake form, I'll get back with you. Um, you also have to be comfortable giving complex requests to a fellow advisor. So maybe you're traveling for business and you still want to take new requests, but here comes one that's for Japan. You've never been to Japan. It's something you'd really like to tackle at some point, but quite frankly, you're not in the mood to learn all about that stress over it and be doing all the research while you're on this other travel opportunity. 
you've got to be comfortable giving that to a fellow advisor. Just give them the lead, let them keep the commission. No need to have referrals back and forth um, from a monetary standpoint. Hire an assistant even when you aren't making money. Um, I think I've talked about this on three or four other webinars with you, Joni. Um, hiring an assistant is probably the smartest thing any of you can do. It will solve so many issues for you. It will make you money within two weeks of having, having an assistant. We do have a previous webinar, I believe, on this. Um, and something else you might have to get used to doing is saying no to a super cool, gosh darn it, I really want to go opportunity. If it's, uh, if you've already scheduled your year out and there's this really cool, I'll give you an example. Uh, we've got a Maldives uh, fam opportunity for five of our advisors right now. Now going to the Maldives is kind of a, it's a trek. Right, you're, it's a, that's a big commitment. It's going to cost a, a lot from an airline standpoint, and it's you're going to be out of the office for a while. As cool as it sounds, I'm encouraging my advisors before they apply to say to themselves, "What and how can I leverage this opportunity?" Not because it's just cool, because I get to go to the Maldives, and this will be a great way, a very inexpensive way to get to the Maldives. However, am I going to do something with that time frame? So those are bravery moves that really will pay off. As, as cool as it seems, maybe, just maybe, you're too busy or maybe you're not busy enough with new sales that you might have to say no to a super cool, gosh darn it, I really want to go opportunity. Those are the bravery moves. Okay, how are we doing? Any other We're questions? Uh, let's see, not in as it regards to, not in regards to this, no. <laughs> okay, we'll here's some tech. We'll save it. Mm -hmm. Here's some technology finds, okay? And again, these come straight from our advisors and my desk. The first one is Moxie. It is a um, app for an iPhone, but there's probably one for Android. It allows you to schedule your text messages, your Facebook messages and post and your WhatsApp messages, your Facebook messages, not post. And what's the importance of this? You could, how many of you guys get something and you want to respond, but it's two o'clock in the morning. And if you send it right now, then they're like, bing, she's up. Let me ask a follow-up question, right? So this allows you to kind of schedule them. Go ahead and type them out, know what you want to say, but schedule them for later on during the hours that you are ready to have a response come back to you. It's called Moxie. Another technology that helps our advisors uh, be more effective while they're traveling is they schedule their emails via their Outlook and CRM. Now, those that use a CRM, please take advantage of your automation tools, which are tools that um, allow you to send automatic emails um, you know, three weeks before somebody's leaving, please make sure you know where your passport is, find your passport right now and pull it out. Like all those things you would normally email your clients about or call your clients about ahead of time, make sure you've got those automation set up. Text replacement, um, again, is something that's an iPhone, but I'm sure Android has the same thing, where you only type one word, but that word is attached to a full phrase. So remember when I said to you before, if you don't have an out of office and you wanna to reply to an email and that email is, hey, I got your email, thanks so very much. I'm, you know, I'm traveling right now, limited time, please fill out this form, blah, 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 blah. Well, instead of having a Word document where you're copying and pasting, you can actually have a text replacement and just type in like O O O, and that is attached to a full phrase that's got links and everything. It is a game changer. You can use that via text or in an email. Calendly works with your calendar to schedule appointments and it has follow-up automation attached to it. So you can almost be having a full conversation with a new client as an example or a current client through Calendly. If it's a current client and they want to talk about their next adventure, but you, you do not want to be getting on the phone and trying to plan it while you're traveling, you can send them that Calendly link that's attached to a you know, a, a, a questionnaire or a survey that then sends a follow-up automatic email that says, let's put 15 minutes on our calendar together, choose a time that works best for you. You can completely control your calendar uh, with 
Calendly. As a matter of fact, for those, uh, the two winners for today's call, I'll send you a Calendly link and in it, it says, you know, webinar winner. So I know when that comes in, it's for 30 minutes, um, gives you a chance to kind of type in your notes, what do you want to talk about, so on and so forth. It completely controls my calendar and helps me control the flow and you be able to plop in where it makes sense for you. Trello is at um, an app uh, technology that many of our advisors use when they are working with assistants um, and allows you to kind of set up boards and put posting notes and drag things over and people you can kind of manage the projects together. Loom um, allows you to pre-record processes for clients to send to them ahead of time. So if uh, you normally, if you've got a client who you know is not really, has never been on a cruise before and they're trying to check in and you know how when you download the app, there's 15 different things. You can record this with your cute little face and you're recording, hey, here's what you're going to do. You're going to click here, then you're going to submit your things here, then you're going to check here, you're going to do all that. You can send that in some of your automations and then that way they feel like that personal connection with you where you normally are feeling like you've got to call them and walk them through it. This is anything that's got a process that you do more than once, you can record, but it shows your cute face there too. Um, and then Facebook Messenger, um, use the auto replies on Facebook Messenger. How many of you guys have people who send you a Facebook message? Hey, it looks like I want to go to Australia or hey, I'm seeing your pictures, you're in Mexico, that looks fun. Set up automatic replies so at least there's some love that you're giving them. Remember I told you about giving them some love now? Hey, thanks for the message. Um, if you're looking to you know, plan your next vacation, as you can see, I'm on mine right now. Uh, please click here and schedule a time. It takes them to the calendar link. Or hey, do me a favor, send me a quick email. I manage everything in my emails. That's managing the expectations for your clients. You see how the technologies and the mindset and the expectations all work together for you to be able to, you know, effectively manage your business while you're traveling. Okay, I'm at the have, end of I my presentation. I'm ready for any and all questions. Okay, I have a question right now about, um, Robin's asking, is text replacement an app and says you can't find it on the Apple App Store. So I'm just curious if, if you could just give her more clarification. In the iPhone, I believe it's in your settings and just Google text replacement uh, for iPhone and it will um, walk you through how to do it. But I'm 99.9% .9 sure it's in your settings. I believe it is. And yeah. if you, Perfect. All right. If you, uh, here it is right there. If you go into your, look, I'm doing it while I'm talking to you. Go into your iPhone and um, search for text replacement, which is something new a lot of people don't know. If you click on settings and you just click in the very top in the search bar, you can start typing what you're looking for and it'll show you exactly where it is. Perfect. Okay, so I have a question that's um, how or why would someone hire an assistant when you're not making any money? Because you wanna make money. So you can, and I think we had, didn't we do a webinar on hiring an assistant? Or building I'm your not team, sure. I if not, said that, and I'm not positive. I, I have to go back and look. I, I'm not recalling it, but it may have been. Okay. Well, we'll we'll do one on it. Um, okay. The reason you do it is this. Listen, you can go to Fiverr, F-I-V-R-R. -R. You can go to um, Teak, T-I-C-Q-U-E, and you can also go to. And I'm going to forget the name of this. I can see it. Oh, what's the name? another company that you can hire assistants to do little things for you oh what's the name of it i'm not going to send me an email and i'll remind i'll i'll look it up i cannot remember but what it is is um it's a program where you can hire people to do things for you especially while you're traveling what the heck is the name it's a weird name anyways um, so as an example, one of our advisors, she was traveling and she needed, um, she had clients that wanted paper documents and she's on a cruise ship, so she can't like print it and how's she going to get it to them, right? So she hired this company for this assistant to literally print the documents, put it in a FedEx envelope and send it to her clients. It could be very specific. What the heck is the name of it? Oh, it's going to drive me crazy. Christy McGowan, if you're on this webinar, will you please type it? You're the one that told me about it. Can't remember. <laughs> um, but Pineapple staffing is another one. Uh, people in the Philippines, you can pay people $5 an hour. You can pay people $8 an hour. You can pay people $50 a week. Have, if you can get yourself into the habit of having an assistant do the things that you don't want to do so that you can focus your attention on making sales as well as onboarding new clients, you know, that emotional connection, uh, do it. But okay, if you're so traveling and you've even got...
Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Go ahead. I, I'll let you finish and then I'll tell you what somebody's come in with some ideas of what it might be that you're trying to remember. Okay, go ahead with that because it's going to drive me crazy. Upwork, Upwork, which I know we use a lot of, is one of them. Um, somebody now said this task, one is task, task Bullet. Focused. Nope, but that's another one. Task Rabbit, Task Bullet, Upwork. This one is a travel advisor focused one. Oh my goodness. Uh, I remember that. I remember we talked about that. What the heck was that? Um, yeah. Lucia? Lucia? Yes, that's it. Let's Lucia. Okay. Whoever said that, yes, good job. Let's okay. Lucia. Let's Lucia. It's travel advisor focused, travel industry focused, and they will do little things for you. Again, this is about being effective, effectively managing your business while you're traveling. Okay, so we got that. And whoever um, said if you're not making money, put that into your people, budget. Hiring it. Mm -hmm. A lot of people said Lucia, so that's good. Uh, let's see. I'm just trying good. to get so these these are just coming at me like you know bullets. They're coming at me. Okay. <laughs> Um, where can I find past? Whoa, I'll, I can answer. I can answer this one. Where can I find past webinars? Mm -hmm. Um, all of our webinars are recorded. So like today's is being recorded. All of ours are, and we post them at travelprofessionalnews.com in the recorded webinars area. You'll find any of Jen's webinars, look under host agency webinars and you'll find all of them there. So that's where you can find them. Uh, let's see. I'm doing a wedding and it has 150 people and I'm trying to control it. How do I get control over the situation where everybody's on the same page and showing up at the same time? Well, that's a really loaded question. <laughs> well, I mean, are you talking about um, during the booking process or how do you corral a bunch of fun people at a wedding at an all-inclusive? Like I need to understand more. Yeah, right I know, I'm not understanding. In the, see if, if she comes back, yeah. Then. Yeah, it, if it's in the planning process, you it's a step by step. We have, you know, here's how, and, and you can present it in a way, the way this works best so that we have success and we don't miss anything is I require all attendees to only communicate uh, with me via whatever that is. If it's an email, set up a separate email address just for that wedding if you have a hundred so that you know all of the emails. And that's actually another, um, tip one of our advisors gave us, they had separate emails, emails for partner promotions, emails for their clients, a different email for uh, maybe it's a, a particular uh, group. Um, you, have just, you, know, you can get as many Gmail accounts as you want to, or even with your GoDaddy or whoever you have your web domain with. Um, make up email addresses just for that and have separate boxes. I set up rules in my emails so that all the emails that are coming from um, my director of finance, they go into one um, bucket so that I know I can go there and anything Dennis needs for me, it's all right there. I can quickly find it. Uh, for every partner, they all have their own email and, uh, email buckets within my Outlook. You can set up you, rules. You can do also one thing you can set up if you're doing like a group or something like that, you could set up a landing page just specifically that you give the link to them for them to get have questions answered, which will probably alleviate a lot of um, emails. Excellent. That's perfect. Absolutely. Any other questions, folks? I'm waiting. I don't see any more, Jen. Okay. That's a, that means they're all writing or hopefully um, they've, uh, they've learned a lot. So here, here's what I'm going to offer to all of you. First off, I'm giving you some of my social handles. On Facebook, just look for me at Jen Lee. Um, I actually have had to go to a public per profile because I have more than 5,000 friends. I'm very popular. Um, <laughs> so I've got a Facebook at Jen Lee or an Instagram at Jen Lee Travel. And then uh, join our Facebook community. It's not TPI. It's just a Jen Lee Facebook community called Fiercely Forward Travel Advisor. Just put that in Facebook. And um, that's where I post a lot of, uh, you know, thought-provoking questions and pictures of me at four o'clock in the morning asking who else is up and what are you doing up at 4 a.m. and stuff like that. It's just <laughs> motivational, positive. Um, anytime there's a, a media pitch that I think you should do to your local media, I'll put that up there. It's just, it, it's, we don't talk promotions. We don't talk really anything. It's real motivation, inspirational, uh, moving fiercely forward together. I, hope you can I do have a couple of questions or one question that I wanted to make sure that, that was answered so that everybody could hear this. Um, she's asking if you offer any consultations, if 
for non-winners? And if so, how do you go about that? Yeah, send me an email. We'll do a quick 15 minute. Uh, I'll do that for anybody just because I want to wow. see you move. So um, my email, and actually I just realized I didn't put it up on my screen here, but my email is J-E-N-N-L at T-P-I online.com. And uh, Joni, if you wouldn't mind just putting that in the chat. I will. I'll stick that in there right now. Hold one sec. And then we'll do the questions, okay? Yeah, they're two good questions. I know. Okay, everybody, I am putting it in the chat area, Jen's email, and I'm sending it right now to everybody. Hopefully you all got it. Okay, so the first question, and what you're gonna do, folks, is you're gonna take and answer this question, these questions fast as you can. We're gonna take the seventh correct, call, correct caller, correct answer. Um, <laughs> that comes before me on the screen here, so fast is good. And then we'll go ahead and take the second one after that. So um, first question, do you want to give the question or do you want me to do it, Jen? Yeah, let me do the question. You know the okay. answer, though. You've I'll do the there. answer. Okay. 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 What's the scariest word for most entrepreneurs? Oh, you got You guys are so fast. <laughs> I, knew that one day. I have never seen it happen that quickly. And I've been doing these for many years. Oh, my God. That was amazing. Okay. I got to count. Okay. Sharon Johnson Lake is the winner. And what do you think the answer is, folks? No. Okay. Sharon, congratulations. Yeah. Okay. We'll go to the next one. I just want to jot her name down so I have that. Okay. All righty. Next time. I got to clear my screen. Hold on. Oh, Lord. You guys. Oh, my God. Not one person got that wrong. Wrong. Everyone got that right. That was amazing. So someone, someone said vacation, which I liked. That was good. Okay. <laughs> that's true. Right. That is that's scary. <laughs> All right. All right. Question oh, number two. You go. Two. I'm ready. Okay. Question number two. Um, out of the proactive tips, which tip tends to get advisors in trouble if they ignore it? And I'm going to take number 10 here. Give the, the correct answer. If they ignore it. Anybody got the right answer, Jenny? Yeah, a lot of them do, but I got to count down to number 10 since I was being so funny about it. Okay. <laughs> the answer is correct, and it is accounting. And Judith. Krotkai, Krotkai, I'm so, sorry if I said that wrong. I'm not exactly sure I want to pronounce it right. But Judith, congratulations. You have won the consultation with our sweet Jen Lee. Okay. Well done, everybody. Yeah, really good stuff, guys. Um, oh, and awesome. if anybody wants a copy of this PowerPoint presentation, I can send it to you. Uh, just send me an email at jenl at tpionline.com. And I am happy to uh, send you the PDF. That's wonderful. And everybody's saying thank you to you, Jen. Someone actually gave you a great compliment. They said, I actually got onto this webinar fig to figure out how the best way to work while I'm traveling, but I like this better. <laughs> so, <laughs> so that was good. good. <laughs> love it. I love it. Everybody, we so appreciate you being on here. What a fun webinar this was. And we all learned a lot. I know. I know I did. Um, everybody, thank you. And Jen, as always, thank you, sweetheart. You are amazing. And we just appreciate you all so much. I love doing okay. these. You know. All right. No, we love doing them with you. All right, everybody. Have a great rest of your day. Okay. Thanks, guys. Go out there and bye make bye. big things happen. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. bye.